Hey my dudes, welcome back to the beginning of a new vlog. Gonna try and make this a weekly one because it's Tuesday, I've just finished out the last vlog. Currently still working on the chapter two prompts for the Winter Magical Readathon. So the one I'm reading for that is the illustrated edition of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Really enjoying reading this as well as participating in the Winter Magical Readathon because it's based around this book, the second year. So it's been a lot of fun. So I need to finish this out though because we're on week three and the week three prompt that I got was to read a book with a pink or purple cover or pink or purple on the cover and so I have two options but I think I'm gonna read The Style of Sea. I'm too excited, I can't not. I feel like this is gonna be my exact kind of book because it features a book within a book. We have a character who finds a book in a library and it recounts lots of cool stories but also one about in his own life which leads him on a treasure hunt or something through a labyrinth. I am doing a terrible job of describing this, but that's the vibe I got from the synopsis. When Zachary Rowling stumbles across a strange book hidden in his university library, it leads him on a quest unlike any other. Its pages entrance him with their tales of lovelorn prisoners, lost cities and nameless acolytes, but they also contain something impossible, a recollection from his own childhood. That's what this book is about. Really, really excited and I love this edition. Thank you so much again, Elizabeth, for this one. I um, this could be one of my favorites of the year. I did enjoy The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern too, but this one though, it's just, it's calling to me. Maybe my expectations are too high for it. We shall see. So I need to finish out Harry Potter first. <laughs> also this week, Gav and I are hoping to start our buddy read of A Boy Called Christmas by Matt Haig, hopefully as well, which will be really nice considering it's Christmas next week. So I need to get in the spirit. I'm not in the spirit yet. Hopefully this week I will be um, because Massey comes home tomorrow from in, from visiting his family in Italy and then at the weekend I think we're going to go have a look around the Christmas markets, get in the Christmas spirit. Should be a good week. <laughs> so I'm going to go and finish out editing last week's vlog, hopefully get it out tonight if not tomorrow because it's getting quite late and then I need to finish out Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets so that I can start on the start of the sea because I I just really want to read it. Okay, I will catch you hopefully tomorrow with a reading update. <laughs> Happy Friday, my loves. Sorry I haven't vlogged in the last couple of days. On Wednesday, Massey came home from Italy, so I didn't do a lot of reading, so I haven't really had anything to update you on, but yesterday I did finish out Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets Illustrated Edition. Thoroughly enjoyed myself. As I'm getting older, I feel like I'm appreciating Lockhart more. <laughs> I don't know, he just has no self-awareness, and I, I, I kind of love him. <laughs> Also, oh, some of the illustrations in this one. I think this page is my favourite. But I also really loved the ghosts as well, again. I just think that's so cool. Uh, but yeah, really enjoyed myself reading this one. I think it still will be a case of it not being my favourite in the series, well, being my least favourite in the series. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed it. Happy to have finished the books for chapter two. Now I can move on to chapter three. I will say, I felt a little bit weird reading this you know, because she tweeted. Anyway, I don't want to talk about that, I'll just get mad. But I'll be starting The Starless Sea today. I've actually just filmed a video, so it's just a mess. But I have got a little package and I know who this is from. I told her not to, but she's done it anyway and I'm excited. But Becca, girl, you have been so busy. You did not need to do this. I told you bloody not to, but oh boy, do I appreciate it. Let's get into this. Becca, what did you do? Ooh, what's this? It's from Happy Place Cosmetics. Look at that holographic. It's called Bougie, and it's a bath and shower whip, and it's so, oh my God, this is so pretty. Look at that glitter. Oh, girl. Oh, and it smells so good. Oh, I can also use it as a bubble bath. Yes. I don't even know what scent that is, but it's very sweet, like Becca knows. <laughs> I really like sweet scents. Oh my God, thank you so much, Becca. And then there's another little one here. What did you do? I really like the um, actual wrapping paper as well. Oh my God, Becca. Thank you so much, that's so cool. That's such a cool gift. Okay, I'll, I don't know if I can show you in the package. It'd probably be better without it, actually. So she knows I've been playing D&D &D and she got me my own, my own D&D &D dice. And look how beautiful and glittery and gold and pink and silver and blue. 
Oh my god, beautiful. I'm gonna be so fancy at D&D tomorrow. Thank you so much, Becca. You, I told you not to, but so happy you did. Thank you, I really like these. She's so good at giving gifts, guys. Okay, I now have lots of packaging stuck to my sleeve. But yeah, I gotta go because uh, we're actually celebrating my uh, one of my best friends, Sarah. It's her birthday, well, it was her birthday a couple of days ago, but we're getting together today to have dinner at Connie's. So I'm gonna go around now, and then when I get home, I'm gonna read some of the Star of Sea, and I will let you know my first thoughts. I'm ugh, My expectations may be too high for that book, but I'm excited for it. Okay, so I'll update you in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to play with the baubles? You don't want to? He hits and he does three points of damage. Does he hit again? He does. He kills it. Nice. Fist up the. Like, it's plunked on the ground in a spear for a second. He's got a scarecrow like this for a second in a spear before letting everything fall down, and that is combat over. Yay, we survived! Hey ladies, it's Sunday, just making a cup of tea. And I've had a very productive couple of days. Well, not productive, I've had a very busy couple of days. So on Friday, I hung out with the girls, that was a lot of fun. And then that night, I totally intended on doing some reading, but we forgot that The Witcher came out on Netflix. We watched a few episodes of that. I was very confused at first because of the time jumps. And it was a case of I had to keep asking Massey questions, which was annoying to him. Although then I reminded him that that's exactly what he did to me when we were watching Game of Thrones for the first few seasons, because I knew what was going to happen. And I was sat there all smug knowing what was going to go down. So yeah, it was a bit of a role reversal. <laughs> he hasn't read the books though. He's just played the game. So um, some things he couldn't answer for me. So I'm really excited for the next season. I hope it does get picked up and also maybe I should read those books. Let me know. <laughs> then yesterday we did some cleaning. Not that you can tell today. This this looks quite clean, but that's because of the camera angle. <laughs> we somehow can never seem to keep this flat tidy. And yeah, I edited a video, I uploaded a video, it was my five star prediction video, and then we went to D&D, &D, which was a lot of fun as always. And G and Logan surprised us because we did have a deal that we weren't going to do presents this year, G and I. But before we made that deal, she and Logan had ordered these for us for the D&D &D gang. And she got us these really cool engraved boxes. So mine is for wizard because I'm a wizard. I'm a what? I'm a wizard and an elf for D&D. And on here it says, warriors will never look as cool as me. And I love that. Like we have the die here as well. In this little box, I just have my dice that I usually use, my new dice that Becca got me so I can use these, and a couple of cards that Logan made us for uh, wicker effigies and a dagger of the blood mage, which is a very good item that I have there. <laughs> Although it's starting to bite me in the ass a little bit. <laughs> and I hands down agree with this quote, honestly, the gang would have been dead without me so many times, just saying. <laughs> for anyone who plays D&D, we're doing the Strad campaign, if you know which one I mean. I'm, I'm a noob. This is like my first ever campaign. And uh, yeah, the fact that I have magic is is very, is it's helpful. <laughs> Although I will say, G's character is a rogue and like, she can do some damage. And then Massey, they got Massey this one for Barbarian. He's a dragonborn barbarian. He uh, <laughs> regrets that choice of being a dragonborn. <laughs> but the quote on here says, you know nothing of passion. If your rage can sunder mountains, you may speak to me of passion. <laughs> so cool. And it's the same deal he has. The die on here as well in his i think he just has he's got his dice and then he's got a pendant um kirill's claw and choker of poison protection <laughs> honestly we're having the best time with D, D, and they totally surprised us and spoiled us with these beautiful boxes um g also has one for rogue which is black and it's really really cool i'm sure you'll see it in her vlog <laughs> so how cool is that how nice is that how thoughtful i absolutely love it but reading I haven't done a lot of reading these last couple of days. I just haven't had the, t well, that's a lie. That's a lie. I could have been reading this morning, but you know what I was doing? I was watching The Witcher. Anybody else just abandoned their TBR to watch The Witcher these last couple of days? Cause same. <laughs> anyway, I have started The Style of Sea. I'm not very far into it, but immediately already, this is my book. 
I predicted it, I knew it, it's my book. Okay, I know it's really early to say that because I am only 25 pages in. Also, this keeps messing me up because it's bound upside down. So if you see me reading it like this, I'm not reading it upside down, it's just uh, bound that way. Which I like, I like that this is a little bit different, you know, adds to the mystery, I guess. So there was a lot of confusion when this first came out and I can totally see why, because the first chapter or segment we have is kind of like a short story about a pirate who's not really a pirate who's been locked away and a girl comes to save him, I think. And then in the second chapter, we have someone who is joining, I wanna say a secret society of librarians, I think. Again, too soon to definitely say that for sure. But that was really interesting and kind of grisly. I don't want to give anything away because y'all need to read this. The next chapter we have is about a boy who's the son of a fortune teller and finds a mysterious door with a bee, a key, and a sword on it. But he doesn't quite take the plunge and try to open this door and then the next day it's gone. And then finally in the fourth chapter, we are in January 2015 and we're following Zachary who finds a mysterious and strange book in his his university library it's under you for like unknown author so we don't know who the author is we just have a title and as he starts reading it he finds that part about the son of a fortune teller in the book which that just happens to be him so he finds this little snippet from his own past so of course that's where we're starting to get into this and that's where i stopped <laughs> So I'm so eager to continue with this. Also in this chapter, the one I've just read about Zachary finding the book, he does mention that he's reading at the time or he's just finished The Shadow of the Wind. So immediately I was like, yes, because The Shadow of the Wind is one of my favorite books. Again, a book within a book, a story within a story. So I was just like, oh God, this is gonna be great as soon as I saw that in there. And then there's also a little section in here that says when Zachary's talking about the book he's discovered he says Zachary cannot tell if it is a novel or a short story collection or perhaps a story within a story which is going to be this and I just I am just over the moon that I'm finally reading this I have only read 25 pages because I've been watching The Witcher and I kind of regret that because <laughs> I know I'm gonna love this. So that's the plan for today. It's already like three o'clock because uh, yeah, I was watching Netflix all morning and we did do some cleaning, but not a lot. So Massey Blessing has gone out to do some shopping for over Christmas just to get us a few bits. And yeah, I might film a video just now. I did receive my owl crate, so I'd like to do an owl crate unboxing, but it's three o'clock and the sun's going down. So I might hold off and just read. I really want to read. I'm having such a lazy Sunday. The last couple of days have been a little bit, a little bit hectic. Um, good though, sociable, but a little bit hectic. So I would, I would like to spend the rest of the day reading. Also, oh my God, I almost forgot. I have picked up as well. Well, I started listening to the audiobook for Never Let Me Go and I'm loving it so far. I knew I would because it does just come so highly recommended. And I picked the audiobook because it was on script and uh, yeah, I'm not doing too good with my TBI this month i have read quite a bit if you consider down to dragons but i've only read one book off of the official tbr for this month and it's already the 22nd i've only read harry potter and the chamber of secrets i'm pretty sure so i need to get a wiggle on so i had a look to see what was available on script from the books i have from this month's tbr and this one was on there really like the audiobook i'm not too far into it i am on chapter six of 23 of the audiobook listening to it at 1.8 speed though so it's not going to take me too long and um so far we just have a character who's recounting her past her time at school and her friendships with two characters Ruth and Tommy and she's called Kath and I do know the twist with this this was why it was on my uh, TBR veteran pile why I haven't picked it up is, is, was because I didn't think I'd enjoy reading it if I already knew the twist from the movie which I really did enjoy as well but so far it's good. It's mostly just character, just her recounting these stories. There are little hints, I guess, at what's going on really with them and this school. I know already, but I'm not sure if it's meant to be a case of it being such a shocking reveal or if you are supposed to gather all this stuff quite early on. So I'm interested to see how this will unfold, but really enjoying that so far. Yes, yeah, so that's the plan for today. I'm gonna to be reading this, listening to this, hopefully too. I'll give you an update once I'm more into this. I'm hoping that this feeling continues because it's such a strong start for me. This writing style isn't for everybody. It's incredibly flowery. The first line actually is, there is a pirate in the basement. The pirate is a metaphor, but also still a person. I can imagine some people would read that for them 
first couple of lines and like roll their eyes hard but I don't know I'm a sucker for it so yeah hopefully the, the feeling continues and because my expectations are so bloody high for this but I may even annotate this I may tab this who is she I don't do that but I just feel like there's going to be so many quotes and lines in here that I'm going to love I'm excited for this mystery I'm excited about the fact that we had a chapter where there was someone being inducted to a kind of like I said it feels like a secret society or a secret club of some kind with these B keys and sword symbolism I am just ah this is going to be my thing isn't it it's going to be the shadow in the wind meets S by JJ Abrams and Doug Dost hopefully <laughs> And I am all kinds of excited for it. I may be completely off because I really just started it. But I'm going to stop the rambling and I'll give you an update when I've read some more. And hopefully I'll still be loving it just as much. now Tuesday and Christmas Eve I thought I best give you guys an update not that I've read a lot I feel like the last update I did as well I was doing the exact same thing which was stood here making cups of tea we've had a couple of hectic but good days yesterday we went round to uh, G's for dinner with we had dinner with G and Logan which was so much fun we played some games it was a really good night and then today Massey and I braved Princess Street on Christmas Eve and oh my god I swear we did it last year as well and uh, yeah that was pretty anxiety inducing the pop the plan as well was to go back to the Christmas market um, but it was just absolutely rammed and uh, no <laughs> we came to a deal with most of our family and friends that we weren't gonna do presents but a couple of our friends that we're hanging out with on Boxing Day have got us gifts so we went to town just to get them a little something thankfully we did find something also got some wrapping paper this is uh, frozen wrapping paper because I couldn't resist Massey also got me a couple of things he got me some fluffy socks from Primark for Christmas and a couple of bubble bars from Lush um, my favorite one is the snow fairy magic wand I just love it it smells like bubble gum and yes and I also got this little polar bear dude it's called a polar bear plunge bubble bar and it smells like peppermint it's just so good so I don't know which one I'm going to use but I'm actually going to run a bath just now to try and do some readings I just haven't had time in the last couple of days actually that's a lie I was watching The Witcher wasn't I on Sunday <laughs> I'm only up to page 45 of The Star of Sea I need to get back to reading it I am really excited to continue and I'm about halfway through the audiobook of Never Let Me Go which I'm absolutely loving uh, we have had some reveals that I, I did already know what they were going to be but the way it's been done I'm a, I'm a fan of I like it a lot but hopefully over the next couple of days it'll be chilled and I'll get some reading done um we're having just a quiet Christmas here we're not visiting family or anything obviously Massey has just been to Italy and seen his mum and his sister but with us having the cats and with like the travel around this time being super expensive we're staying here so it's just going to be me Massey and the cats tomorrow but then we've got plans with our friends on boxing day and then the day after I think I'm going to do some filming <laughs> So hopefully over the next couple of days, I'll be able to get some more reading done starting right now I'm gonna go get a bath gonna use one of these bubble bars and read some more of the style of sea and then later tonight because it's tradition Well, it's just kind of my family tradition We always watch a Muppets Christmas Carol and have a beer for my granddad So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have a beer and watch uh, Muppets Christmas Carol Which is my favorite Christmas movie. I do love Elf as well But that one's my favorite if you don't include Nightmare Before Christmas, which I tend to watch on Halloween <laughs> but that is the plan. Also going to be wrapping some presents later. And yeah, I probably won't vlog tomorrow with it being Christmas Day, but I'll give you guys an update on Boxing Day about just 
how everything has been reading wise etc the intention was to finish out this vlog today and get it posted but there isn't much in this vlog so far so i think i'm just going to do a two week vlog this time and also chapter four of the magical readathon came out yesterday and i still haven't done that yet so i'll do that at some point too and show you that but yeah i'm gonna go get this bath and do some bloody reading Hello, my loves. Much time has passed. It is now Sunday. What date is it? Honestly, we're in that weird no man's land between Christmas and New Year, so I have no idea. Okay, it's the 29th, and I think the last time I updated you was on Christmas Eve, so on Tuesday. So I haven't updated this vlog in four days. I am so sorry. It got away from me. We had a very lovely day on Christmas though. It was very chill. I didn't get a lot of reading done because we just watched a lot of movies, honestly. We had a lovely day. I hope you all have had a really lovely festive period as well, whether or not you celebrate anything. I hope it's just been super chill. I hope you've been having some good books to read and been spoiled and just had lots of good food we, ha we had a lot of good food <laughs> and basically since christmas day we've just been socializing every every day i think up until this point um so today is the first day where we've just kind of been on our own so i just haven't been updating the vlog because my friends don't necessarily want to be on camera but we've just had a lovely a lovely time of it it's been very very nice and i have got some reading done in between all the socializing i was just trying to cram in 30 pages here 30 pages there and i've actually Finished three books since Christmas Eve, which is like, I wasn't expecting it because I didn't feel like I had time to read, but clearly I have because I finished The Starless Sea and I loved it. I loved it so, so much. I'm very biased because this contains so many things I love and I feel like this isn't a book for everybody. It's a definite case of having to suspend your disbelief through the whole thing. Honestly, two thirds of the way in, I was very confused as to whether this was gonna be for me or not as well, even though it was such a strong beginning because I got very, very confused. But I was confused in such a good way and the way this wrapped up, it was just so magical and sweet, but still heartbreaking in a way. And I don't know how I'm going to explain what happens in this book to you. I feel like it's definitely one best just going in and just discovering it for yourself. But it's set up in five parts and a lot of it is a short story from a book that's found in this book by a character. So it will be labelled so you'll get chapters like this and it starts off with Sweet Sorrows which is the book that Zachary finds in the university library. And you also have chapters where you'll have a keyhole and that will be a chapter from Zachary's perspective and then occasionally as well you'll get an interlude too so there's a lot of stuff going on in here lots of mystery especially trying to figure out how these stories and the main narrative to do with Zachary are somewhat connected and all these snippets are connected to one another it's a lot <laughs> but I loved it the writing in particular there was so many beautiful quotes in here, too many to list for you. Mostly about stories and just the love of books in general. It's very much a love letter to fiction and it also had nods to Alice in Wonderland and there was lots of cats, a mystery to do with secret clubs. So much, so much that I love was in this book. And if I'm being completely honest, there was a couple of things in here that I don't usually like in books, but they worked for me in this, and I can't tell you what they are because they would be a spoiler, but that really took me back. Maybe just all the things that I love in here outweighed those completely. So I can imagine there's some things in here that a lot of people aren't gonna like, that I can't really talk about, but I didn't mind them because this just contained so many things that I love. We have book within a book, books within those books, a huge secret mystery underground labyrinth of stories. It's incredibly speculative at times. You have to just go with it. You can't overthink it. You just need to let the story take you. And it did for me. Also, cats and characters who had a profound love of literature too. So much to relate to. I really, 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 really enjoyed this but would i recommend it to everybody no i wouldn't if you like the night circus definitely try it but if you're someone who who is more logical minded and needs their stories to make sense 
this probably isn't the book for you, but it was the book for me. Five stars, to nobody's surprise. <laughs> it wasn't a perfect book for me, not that any book can be perfect, you know? <laughs> there was a couple of things that I would have done differently, but it's still gonna make my list of best books of the year because it was just everything I wanted. And there was times when I was socializing over the last few days and I just could not stop thinking about this book. I had to remind myself that I needed to be present with my friends who I love and I felt so bad because my brain was here in this secret underground labyrinth of stories with these characters. So yeah, f five stars. <laughs> I also finished out Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Jigoro. I listened to the audiobook. I did read some of this physically, but mostly I listened to the audiobook because I really enjoyed the narrator. And I really liked this one too. I ended up giving it four stars. This one again is quite difficult to talk about without spoiling the whole underlying mystery of this, I guess. Um, but I already knew it anyway from the film. But the way that this was paced, I guess, and the way that that all comes to light is quite subtle. I don't feel like it was meant to be super shocking or anything, but the ending does pack a punch and it did have me feeling quite emotional. Um, for these characters, you grow to love them and it's just quite dark, actually. It's, it's very sentimental but also really dark if you properly think about this situation and the things that are happening in this book it's very messed up and i guess it felt more dystopian in that way too and i really really enjoyed the writing i really really liked the characters ruth in particular she was so interesting there was times in this book when i detested ruth there was times when i was cheering for her and she was i feel like the heart and the driving force of this book and she was so interesting i could have had a full book about ruth and i would have been very very happy about that because yeah she was quite the character and yeah really really enjoyed it for all of you who said i should still read it even though i've watched the movie thank you yes so so good i did give it a four star though it didn't quite get me the way i think it would have done if i hadn't already known what was going to happen towards the end of this book if you get what i mean so four stars really really would recommend this if you haven't seen the, even if you have seen the movie i'd still recommend it but especially if you haven't yes read this it's so good i completely understand why this is some people's favorite book completely get that. I want to read more from Kazuo Shigoro. If you have any recommendations, let me know. And I also forgot to mention completely, but I was supposed to be buddy reading A Boy Called Christmas by Matt Haig on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day with Gav. I didn't get any reading done of this on Christmas Eve, but I got a bit done on Christmas Day and then a bit more after that and I read this really really quickly because it's a children's book and I really enjoyed it too. I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would, but it really was a lot of fun. I'm so glad I read it around this time of year as well, even though I didn't necessarily read it before Christmas. But essentially it's about a little boy who becomes Father Christmas and just how that happens. He lives with his dad in this tiny little shack of a house in Finland at the beginning of this book. They're very, very poor and his dad takes this job to go and see if he can find this town of elves, this magical invisible town of elves. And then he can take proof back to the king and become rich because they're very, very poor. And um, he leaves little Nicholas with his mean aunt. So Nicholas decides he's gonna go to try and find this his dad and this elf town as well. And yeah, very cute, lots of chaos. It was a little bit dark in places, like darker than I expected. But done with a lot of humor. I really like Matt Haig's writing, um, but I've never tried his children's books, but I would definitely continue with this. I'll probably wait till next year though, around Christmas time to continue. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. I gave it four stars, didn't blow me away, but it was enjoyable, super cute, and such a quick read as well. And currently, I am listening to the audiobook for Misery by Stephen King, because you never guess what I did, guys. I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot, because this book's not in English. <laughs> this book's in Spanish. I put this on my wish list, not knowing, and Bobby bought it because it's such a beautiful edition, right? And uh, yeah, Bobby got me this and I feel really bad. I'm not, I'm not going to get rid of this because it's Spanish and I can't read it. I'm gonna keep it for sentimental value because it was a gift and I think it's funny. But because I knew what the story was about because I've seen the film, I didn't even look at the back and I didn't notice. So my ring light will let you see. It's quite late because I've just filmed a video or I've been filming. But yeah, that's um, Spanish. I didn't even look at the back. I knew the story and I didn't need to, to check. So yeah. I haven't been reading this physically. I've been listening to the audiobook. 
And I'm not that far in. I'm only a few, well, maybe an hour or two into the audiobook, but really, really enjoying it. I'm sure most of you know what this is about, but I'll give you more, of, well, I'll give you more thoughts when I read more. Hopefully I'll read some more tonight, which leaves two more books as well as Misery on the TBR for this month. And I, yeah, yeah it's, we've got a couple of days left of December and I still haven't read, um, started The Song Rising either by Samantha Shannon for the next Bonathon Live and I'm a little bit stressed. <laughs> so today I'm gonna to be doing some editing. It's around 4 p.m. now, so the light's gone. Um, I'm gonna be doing some editing and then I'm going to be, well, listening to some more of Misery and perhaps starting Peter Pan because I really wanna read at least a couple more books by the end of the month. I don't think it's gonna happen because I've got a lot of filming and editing to do in the next couple of days, but we'll see. But I'll give you an update later. Hello my dudes, it's Monday. I've just got home from work and I'm doing the usual thing in the kitchen, making tea. Didn't do a huge amount of reading last night. I've only listened to exactly two hours of Misery by Stephen King. And I'm gonna start on Peter Pan, I think, tonight. I'm gonna finish out this vlog tomorrow, I think, which is actually New Year's Eve. We have people coming around tomorrow night uh, for some drinks. I am not going out <laughs> in Edinburgh New Year's Eve. No way. <laughs> we were thinking about doing the torchlight procession today, which is just where a huge amount of people just have torches and they just walk around Edinburgh. It's, it looks like a lot of fun, but it's actually quite expensive. So we're like, oh, maybe not, maybe not this year, maybe next year instead. <laughs> this is quite the look today, I know. This hat, oh, check out this t-shirt. This is my new favorite thing. My friend Sarah got me it for Christmas. It says, reading is fun. And then there's the devil reading <laughs> some kind of satanic Bible. And it's, I love it. It's my new favorite thing, as I said. She also got me a Jake mug, which I'm yet to use. I should have, I should have put this cup of tea in there. Anyway, I am babbling on. I need to do chapter four, the magical readathon. The winter magical readathon. I never unlocked it because I was reading the style of C and then things just got busy. And let's do that now. So I'm literally a week behind on the magical readathon, but it's fine because G said that it can be something you can do at your own pace. So I'm just gonna extend this into January, but I have my laptop here. So let's see what chapter four will unlock for me. I have been really lucky with the prompts so far that they've worked for the books that I've had from my wheel. I don't know what's gonna happen this time because I have seen some of the prompts on Twitter and I don't think that they're gonna work for any of the books that I still need to read this month. It's the 30th, guys. I have until tomorrow to finish these books. It's not gonna happen. So let's unlock chapter four. Chapter five was released yesterday. Let's unlock chapter four. Chapter four, guys, okay. Not gonna read all of this stuff because most of you will have already probably read this. Okay, so you have to go based on whether or not you selected to join the book club with Hermione, which I did. <laughs> Yes, I am number one of the Book Owlery Club. Okay, I read that really weird, didn't I? I'm one of the few students who already know about the Chamber of Secrets. Nice one. Continue. It's the start of Christmas break. Oh, Hogwarts is so magical at Christmas. Okay. Oh, and then we have G's magical giveaway. Super cute. And continue. Oh, so I need to decide whether to use the Polyjuice Potion or say, no, there must be another way. Um, well, mm, I mean, it's not the smartest of ideas, is it? <laughs> I'm gonna go for no, there must be another way. Because of all the magic, you really had to transform into somebody else. I don't know. It just seemed like a lot of work. <laughs> In chapter one, did you acquire Tom Riddle's diary? I don't think I did. Oh, the leather book has been shoved down the toilet. Do I pick up the book or no thank you, let's go make that potion. Ah, uh, pick up the book. The journal seems to be empty. Okay, read a book that has been written by an author whose last name starts with either T, M or an R. This one could work, Shoba Rao. I think that's the only one that I have. Samantha Shannon, doesn't work. Stephen King, doesn't work. And then J.M. Barry. So I guess my first book for this one would be Girls Burn Brighter by Shelba Rao, but I wanted to read Peter Pan tonight because <laughs> I feel like I'll actually be able to get through this a lot quicker than I will this one. So, <laughs> okay, I'm extending this to January. <laughs> Let's see if I get any more. Okay, so I need to dive into the memory. All they have to do was follow the spiders. Gotta get those answers. Let's follow the spiders. Hell no, I'm going back to the castle. Yeah, that one, I am a coward. I am Ron in this scenario and spiders is a nope, 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 nope. 
Ooh, do I cast Protego or Reducto? Because someone's trying to kill me on this Quidditch field. Um, Reducto, let's go for Reducto. Tweet a photo of your favorite, does that say Quidditch player with a hashtag Dobby sent a bludger. Completion, is that, is that it? Oh wow, I only had one prompt. Nice one, and I mean it does actually fit with something that's on my TBR, so that's good, but it's not what I wanted to read immediately. <laughs> it's fine. We will just hold out and do some more in, well, continue in January and see if I can read this one. I'm hoping to finish this one out tonight and to get as much of misery done as I possibly can. So then I guess I will just try and save this from the wheel and read this first in January and then that's my chapter four done. Not bad, I know a lot of people got free prompts for chapter four, so I'm very lucky with just the one. It's not been bad this readathon so far. It's, it's been good, it's been working out for me. <laughs> okay, so that was chapter four. I guess I'm continuing into January and I'll do chapter five then because you can't really open the next chapter until you've finished the book for the previous chapter. So I'll figure out what that will be next month. Uh, right now I'm gonna read for a little bit. I'm gonna start Peter Pan. I'm really excited to read that edition. And then in a bit, I'm going to try and see if I can make some um, aesthetic differences to the wheel, some changes. I'm not sure if it's gonna work out. You may just be getting the same old looking wheel in January, but I'm gonna try. I have some plans. Let's see if that happens. Okay, so my initial idea was to have a larger piece of cardboard behind my wheel so I can put some lights around it and then maybe like cover this in gold. I have some gold glitter card, but not a lot of it because I wanted to add some gold glitter strips um, kind of sectioning off each color and also in the middle but then I don't know what to cover this with. I did get some spray paint. I don't know, um, it's too much, isn't it? It's too much. And I don't know if this is going to work, but this is just my little craft project for this evening. I just wanted to try something different. And I do like the idea of the lights. The thing is, these lights, which are more circular, I just put them, I just put changed out the, the bulb. So these ones are ideally what I'd want, but I only have one set of these and there's only five of them because I went to the pound shop and that's all they had left. But I do have these ones and I have 10 of them. I got two strings of them, which will fit around, but it's a bit annoying because I prefer like these ones as opposed to these ones. And I guess it doesn't make too much of a difference. I can always see if I can get some more of these at some point and change it up. But yeah, that's what I'm doing just now. <laughs> but we'll see what craftiness I can come up with and see how this ends up looking. I will bring you along for the journey. <laughs> okay, my dudes, I think I'm giving up. I hate it, <laughs> I hate it so much. This was a fail. I will try and maybe attempt this again one month, but I hate these lights. This is too much stress. Also, I could have totally been listening to my audiobook, but I wasn't. I was watching Murphy's vlog. That was an unfortunate place to pause, wasn't it? Don't think this is worth it. <laughs> I think it's just gonna stress me out. Tips agrees. Also, it makes it harder for this to be able to spin properly, and I'm scared that it will kind of knock into these, and then there'll be like an incident where it falls, and these smash. I don't think it's actually worth it. I had big dreams. I had some real big dreams, um, but I don't think it's gonna be a thing, but hopefully you'll understand where my mind was with this. I was gonna have like lights all the way around. It was gonna be gold. It was gonna be so cool, but I feel like that's a task for a, another time. So right now I'm just gonna do an easy thing and I'm gonna add some gold glitter card to this somewhere. And once I finished Murphy's vlog, I will probably um, actually listen to my audiobook and then I'm gonna bloody read Peter Pan. <laughs> Hello, so I'm just over here questioning my choices <laughs> because I ran out of tape <laughs> and I can't find any glue and I haven't quite finished it. There's two strips still left to go on here. This is what it looks like now. <laughs> Why did I do this? 
Honestly, I couldn't think of a way to change up the wheel or anything, so I thought, hey, I'll just add glitter. Everything is better with glitter, right? <laughs> and now there's glitter all over my carpet and all over my clothes. The cats are gonna be covered in glitter. This isn't even done. I was hoping to film tomorrow, but this just looks weird. <laughs> Tonight has just been a fail, y'all. <laughs> and now, Bella. Bella is trying to steal these. Hi. <laughs> I can cut more if she messes these up. But also, please don't ingest glitter. Oh, you're so cute when you're an actual cat and not asleep. <laughs> Bella, they're up here. <laughs> Ow. Yeah, that was karma. I asked for that. Okay, I should stop doing that because she's going to have glitter all over her fur. I had such good intentions. I had such grand plans. Well, not really. I was just going to stick glitter around it and uh, obviously put the lights around it. And none of, that's, none of that has worked out tonight. So I'm going to call it quits. I'm actually going to read. I haven't actually talked to you much about Misery. Um, I'm only a few hours into it. I listened to about an hour more. I am loving Misery. I knew I would because I enjoyed the movie so much and I know it doesn't differ too much from the movie and so, so many people highly recommend Misery. So if you didn't know what it's about, it's about a man who's a famous writer. He's known for this series all about a woman, a female character called Misery. The book starts off with him waking up from a bad car accident. His legs are basically shattered and his number one fan finds him, takes him back to her house. Her name is Annie Wilkes. And it seems like she's gonna nurse him back to health. However, Annie Wilkes is a very strange character and I'm intrigued to find out more about her. Um, she's definitely scary, it's unnerving. This book is very unnerving. I mean, it's Stephen King, that's somewhat to be expected, but this one in particular though, it definitely has me on edge. She is just so unpredictable. She can go like fly off into rages and stuff. And essentially he has just finished, well, he has just published his last book in the Misery series and he hates Misery. He's been stuck writing these books for so long. He doesn't like his main character anymore. And he was very happy about killing her off at the end of the series. And when we're first introduced to Annie as a character, she does mention that she's waiting on the last book to come out in paperback. And um, yeah, he killed her off and she's not happy about it. So she basically holds him hostage and tries to get him, Bella, <laughs> she's wanting these again. But basically she keeps him there and makes him write a different end to the series. She makes him revive this main character that she loves so much. The observations about Annie in this book are really interesting. I'm hoping we're going to get a lot more about her backstory. Um, I will say though, it does seem like she perhaps could be mentally ill. And I don't like when mental illness is used as a way to justify someone's bad actions, I guess, without there being any sympathy or understanding for the character who has this mental illness. I don't know if that's definitely the case, but I feel like we'll find out more throughout the book. But either way, really unnerving. I feel like characters who are so unpredictable really put me on edge because just people in general who are unpredictable put me on edge you know like when someone's drunk and you don't know how they're going to respond to something one minute they're laughing and joking and the next minute they're flying off into a rage because someone said something too far that's the kind of vibe i get for annie she also is i guess sheltered and a little bit childlike as well in a way so yeah i'm really really enjoying this book i knew i would are only a few hours in though but I'm I'm hoping for more about Annie. I don't remember everything from the movie but um, just reading this book I feel like Kathy Bates was like the perfect casting and I can't think of anybody else when I picture Annie I just picture Kathy Bates. So really really enjoying it but now I'm gonna set this wheel aside and I'm finally gonna start Peter Pan. I may even get a bath later but I'm um, gonna probably do a little time lapse of Peter Pan because of this uh, edition. It's really, really cool. And then get in the bath and I'll try and update you guys tomorrow and let you know if I was able to do this and my thoughts on Peter Pan, etc. So I will just catch you then and call it a night for tonight. <laughs>
Hey, what's up? Hello. <laughs> My name is Emma. Um, it's Tuesday, it's New Year's Eve. I need to finish out this vlog. But first, I actually have a couple of Christmas gifts. The first one I bought, well, I bought it myself with money that my grandma gave me. So my grandma bought me this book and I chose this one. Y'all who know what this book is, you know why I picked it. It's The Binding by Bridget Collins. And I completely forgot to tell you guys that I got this one. I got this one a couple of days ago, actually. And it's beautiful. The reason, the reason why I got this is because it's a book within a book. <laughs> I feel like that could be a new brand for me, I don't know, but this one is about a character. He will become a bookbinder and in these beautiful volumes he captures a memory in each one. Then one day he finds one of these books with his own name on it, which recounts his own past, his own memories, so it's a mystery to do with that. And it's gonna be my thing, isn't it? And also this, it's, it's just, it's so foiled, <laughs> it's so foiled. I couldn't resist. Um, it's been on my wishlist for a hot minute. It's been on my radar for a while and then I was talking to Steph about it when Steph came up. Link to her channel in the description. She's awesome. And we're talking about it and I feel like this could be one of my faves. You know, book within a book. Let me know your thoughts if you've read this one. I'm really excited for it. And then I received a parcel today. I did open it thinking that it was a gift that I've got for a friend from Amazon, but it wasn't, it was a book. And Claire did tell me that she was sending me something. So thank you so much, Claire. And we have the note in here. It says, Dear Cody, one of my angels of the pages, wishing you a belated Merry Christmas and a fantastic new year. Wishing you a very lovely start to the new year as well, Claire, and a belated Merry Christmas. And she says, here's to what I'm sure will be a fantastic 2020. Hope you like the book choice from Claire. And I love the book choice. It's one of these beautiful anniversary editions and it's The Lies of Lot Lamora by Scott Lynch, which is one of my favorite series. And I love these editions so much. They now match, well, this one matches my Name of the Wind ones in this edition as well as my Mistborn series as well. I just really, really like these. And when I reread it, which I will do hopefully eventually soon, <laughs> I will read this version. I'm gonna try it. I didn't make it a goal or anything, like I put my goal video up, but I want to do some rereads in 2020 as well of some of my uh, favorite series, Mistborn and The Les Alt Lamora, although I do need to catch up and actually read Republic of Thieves as well. But thank you so much, Claire, for this beautiful book to add to my collection. My collection is looking real fancy and real swish right now. And thank you so, so much. You did not have to, really, really appreciate it. And I just absolutely love these editions, so thank you again. And wishing you all the best for 2020 as well. I hope it's gonna be good. I hope everyone has an amazing 2020. Um, yeah, it's New Year's Eve. I got a little bit of a late start today because last night I was reading Peter Pan, as I said I would, and I read the whole thing actually last night. It didn't take me too long uh, with it being a children's classic. It was only 200 and something pages. And uh, this edition as well. I'm really excited to read my Alice one now because these are absolutely beautiful. So if you didn't know these are illustrated by uh, Mina Lima or Mina Lima, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. And it says here it has interactive elements, and <laughs> it definitely does. I'll show you a couple, but I don't want to spoil this edition too much for anyone who wants to try these, which I would recommend. But we have things like this so you have like oh like a little compass here and this one's one of my favorites it's like a medical notes patient card and you open it up and we have the three children wendy john and peter and their brains and in their brains you will find neverland so you just kind of flip these up and there's a map there's a couple of other maps in here as well it's just so beautiful and it made the experience of this even more enjoyable i really really liked peter pan and i feel like it was weird because the lost boy by christina henry is one of my favorite books of this year which is a dark retelling of peter pan and i'd never read the original until now and this is dark like I thought Christina Henry was really going there with it but no Peter is such an interesting character he's so self-centered and sneaky and cunning and Captain Hook as well is a really interesting character there were definitely some things in here that took me back at first for example um, because of the time obviously it's gonna read differently uh, times have changed and um, there is some racism in here which did kind of throw me at the beginning However, I like the portrayal of Tiger Lily. I really liked her as a character. I don't feel like I need to tell you what Peter Pan is. I feel like everyone knows this story, right? <laughs> At least the Disney version anyway. But Tiger Lily was like a complete polar opposite to Wendy. Like Wendy kept saying things, like she just really wants to be like a mother. That's the whole point of this book, that she wants to be a mom, I think. And she'll come out with lines in jest, such as, 
oh I envy spinsters or something when the boys are running around and causing chaos and it's just it's it's really interesting so I was expecting it to not be exactly with the times it has some sexism in there and and some racism too um, but this was a play in 1904 and I didn't know actually that J.M. Barry is was a Scottish playwright but all that being said I found this so interesting the way it's written as well it wasn't too hard to comprehend and even in this edition occasionally they would give you the more up-to-date more modern version of the word I guess not that it was particularly tricky but there was quite a lot of metaphors in here as well um some symbolism I think too and I really liked the depiction of um Mr and Mrs Darling as well which I don't feel like we've had a lot of that in the Peter Pan Disney version so I really really enjoyed this it was really interesting I gave it four stars well I think I'm giving it a 4.5 actually because I was swept up in the magic of Neverland and I really like Tinkerbell as well. These characters I think made this book for me um, but I didn't love it as much as I was expecting. I thought this would be a five star book. Maybe it would be upon a reread. I feel like it's definitely one that I will reread in the future and probably gain more from the second time around but cannot recommend Peter Pan enough as well as this edition if you can find this edition is a lot of fun and thank you so much Kate for um, gifting me this book. I really enjoyed myself reading this and it was just a nice quaint also slightly bittersweet story but also with some sinister undertones with Peter being the way he is and yeah it just solidified the fact how much I love Lost Boy as well like I just love Lost Boy even more after reading this and I really enjoyed this one too so thank you again Kate loved this and then I've been reading Misery I'm about halfway through the audiobook now um I feel like this is another case of a book within a book right because it's really interesting that it's written from the perspective of a writer which I don't feel like I've read a lot of books from the perspective of a writer before so I'm really enjoying it for that um Annie as a character is still messing with me um she does make me feel on edge and it's cool to see how our main character uh, Paul is putting together this new ending of his series specifically for her and her feedback and stuff I really enjoy the relationship between the two and the conversations that they're having so I, I, I do know what's going to happen at the end of this book because of the movie so um, I'm excited to see all of that unfold so I haven't quite <laughs> done it still have the rest of today to get this book done but I have friends coming around soon I need to edit this vlog and get it out into the world for you guys so in this mashup of a couple of weeks what have I read well I have read five no four and a bit books not bad considering how sociable I was being this uh, last couple of weeks so firstly I read Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets illustrated edition thank you so much Steph for sending me this edition absolutely thoroughly enjoyed myself reading this. I'm excited to carry on and read uh, Prince Prisoner of Azkaban because that's probably my fave in the series. Um, maybe Goblet of Fire. It's like a tie, honestly. <laughs> really enjoyed all the illustrations and everything. And then after that one, I read one of my new faves, which is The Style of Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Thank you so much to Elizabeth for sending this book my way. It's five stars. I think I talked about it a lot <laughs> in previous clips. So I'll leave it there, but mm, so good. And then another chef's kiss of a book never let me go by kazu ishiguro listened to the audiobook and read this one physically went back and forth really really enjoyed this one as well i gave this four stars and highly recommend it for any of you who haven't tried it try it so good and then i read peter pan four stars and then i am reading misery and i feel like this is going to be a high rating from me as well so that's what i read in the last couple of weeks so let me know your thoughts on any of these books if you've read them i'm wishing you a fantastic start to 2020 and just a fantastic year in general i feel like 2020 is going to be a good year for me and you guys are a huge part of that not to get soppy on you but yeah i hope you enjoyed this vlog i hope you enjoyed seeing what i got up to over the christmas period not that i showed a lot of it but i hope you enjoyed hearing about what i read over the christmas period please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and i will catch you in the next one my dudes which will hopefully be a singular weekly vlog so i'll see you then bye y'all